Hi everyone, I'm Latasha from WebsiteSetup.org and today I'm going to show you how to create a website. But first, if you're new here, welcome. WebsiteSetup.org is a free online resource for learning web development, design, and WordPress. Our goal is to help beginners create their own websites, blogs, and online stores using the right tools and platforms. To learn more about our review policies and processes, be sure to click the link in our description box or visit WebsiteSetup.org. So step one is to choose a domain name. In order to build a website, the very first thing that you'll need is a domain name. Domain names cost anywhere from 10 to $50 a year with the typical price tag being around $15. Now, if you're making a website for a business, your domain name should match your company name if possible. So for example, your company name.com. If you're planning to set up a personal website for yourself, then yourname.com can be a great option. And if you don't have a domain name yet, I'll show you how to get one for free in the next step. Step two is to get web hosting and register your domain. In addition to having a domain name, you'll also need website hosting. Web hosting is a service that hosts and stores your website files or content on a secure server that's always up and running. Affordable and reliable web hosting for new websites usually costs between three to $10 a month. It's less than a cup of coffee, but an important investment for your website success. Whichever web hosting company you sign up with, make sure it has these features. First, a free domain name with SSL for security one-click install for WordPress, custom email accounts, unlimited or unmetered bandwidth, and customer support, preferably 24 seven live chat. We recommend using bluehost.com for web hosting and domains. They offer free domain registration for the first year and getting a domain name and hosting from the same company saves you some time and money. So to get a web hosting account, simply visit bluehost.com and click on get started now. Next, choose a web hosting plan. Then you'll want to choose and register a domain name, which is free for the first year through Bluehost. If you already have a domain name that you bought somewhere else, Bluehost does allow you to hook it up to a new hosting plan, but there'll be some additional steps needed here. And we've outlined all of those on our blog. So I'll link that down below. Now, step three is to set up WordPress through your web host. Once you have your domain name and web hosting ready to go, you'll need to choose and install a website building platform, also known as a CMS. We recommend choosing WordPress since it's easy to use and comes with thousands of free designs and add-ons that make your website look professional and unique. So first, log into your Bluehost account, click on My Sites, and then on Create Site. Provide some basic information about your site and the WordPress installation will start. It will all happen on autopilot, which is really nice. And when the setup is done, Bluehost will show you the installation and login details. Be sure to save this information somewhere safe. With WordPress installed, what you should do next is test if everything works. The easiest way to do that is just by typing in your domain name into your web browser. Next, you'll wanna verify SSL and HTTPS settings. In short, an SSL certificate makes sure that your website is delivered to your visitors securely. Bluehost automatically adds an SSL when you create a new website or install WordPress. But to check your site's SSL status, just follow these steps. Log into your Bluehost portal, click on My Sites, find your site and click on Manage Site, go to the Security tab, and under Security Certificate, you'll find your free SSL certificate status. If everything went well, you should see a lock icon next to your domain name in the web browser. Step four is to customize your website design and structure. This is the fun part. With your bare website alive and kicking, it's now time to make it feel more like your own by picking a nice design, customizing it, and adding branding elements. First, you'll wanna choose a theme for your website. WordPress themes are interchangeable, meaning that you can switch from theme to theme easily. Most importantly, there are thousands of free and paid WordPress themes available on the web. If you wanna get a free theme, which is where most people like to start, the best place to go is the official theme directory at wordpress.org, particularly the section for the most popular themes. You're free to browse through that list and pick any theme that you like, but to speed things up for you in this guide, we recommend Neve. It's a versatile theme that comes with a handful of starter sites and design packages for different niches and types of websites. So go to your WordPress admin interface, which you can find at yoursite.com slash WP admin and use the username and password you got during the WordPress installation. Go to themes, 
add new. In the search box, type in Neve and click on the install button next to the theme's name. After the installation is done, click on the activate button that will appear in place of the install button. You'll see a success message, which lets you know that the installation went as expected. From there, you'll need to import a design only for Neve theme users. One of the great things about this theme is that you get not just one design with it, but a whole range of different designs that you can pick from. So click on the big blue button to see all of them. There are more than 20 designs available for free, and they cover most of the popular website niches like business, restaurant, fitness, music, food, wedding, photography, e-commerce, portfolio, and a whole lot more. Basically, no matter what topic your site might be about, you'll probably find a design package that fits. For the purpose of this guide, we'll pick the first one on the list called Original. You'll notice that this installation process takes care of all the elements you'll need on your site. You get the design itself, all the plugins required to make it work, and also demo content that you can modify later. So click on the import button to get everything going. And after a minute or so, you'll see the success message. Next, go to appearance options to see what else you can do with the theme. So once you have a logo ready, you can add it to your site. You can go to appearance options and click on the link labeled upload logo. Additionally, you can choose if you want to display the site name and tagline alongside the logo and set the max width of the logo. Then click on the publish button when you're done. It's in the top left corner and click on the X button to exit the customizer. Another thing you can experiment with is changing the color schemes and fonts used on the site. As you're learning how to create a website, this is an easy fix to make your site more unique and more in tune with your brand identity. To begin, go to Appearance Options once again and click on Set Colors. You can change the color assignments for the Neve theme via the customizer. To switch any of the colors, just click on it and pick a new color. And of course, click on Publish and X when you're done. Changing fonts works pretty similarly. Just click on the Customize Fonts link in the Appearance Options panel. And this theme lets you pick from a whole catalog of system fonts and Google fonts. Just click on the font family box and select the font that you like. After that, you can fine tune the individual fonts used for your headings. Now to customize the font used for the body section of your site, click on the arrow button near the top left, then on general. This will take you to a similar options panel, but this time you're adjusting the main body font. Again, click on publish next when you're done. Another thing you can do in the appearance Neve options panel is set how you like your sidebar to look. Just click on content slash sidebar to begin. You have three main options here. There's no sidebar, sidebar to the left, or sidebar to the right. Sidebar to the right is the classic layout for most websites, and you can also set the content width here. So go ahead and do that and click publish and X. Another thing you may also want to add are widgets. Widgets are those small content blocks that usually appear in website sidebars. To configure widgets, go to appearance widgets. And on the left, you can see all the widgets available. And on the right, there are all the widget areas supported by your current theme. To add a widget to the sidebar, all you need to do is grab the widget from the left and drag and drop it onto the sidebar area. So for example, if you wanna list all your pages in the sidebar, grab the pages widget and drag it onto the sidebar section. You can also configure some of the basic settings of that widget. So far, what we've covered will be enough for you to figure out how to create a website that stands out and looks original, but there are many more options available. To see them all, go to Appearance, Customize. This will fire up the main interface of the customizer with all of its settings and presets. We definitely encourage you to browse through what's available there and just play around with some of the different options. You'll likely stumble upon some customizations that we haven't discussed here. Step five is to add content and pages to your website. Web pages are easy to create in WordPress, but before we get into the how-to, let's discuss what pages you should create in the first place. Most websites will find the following pages essential. Home page, about page, contact page, blog page, services page, and a shop page. Now, many of the pages will be very similar in structure, the only difference being the content on the actual page. Basically, once you learn how to create one page, you'll know how to create them all. With that said, there is some nuance here, so let's cover how to create a couple of basic types of pages. First, home page. If you're using the same thing that we are, your home page is going to look something like this. You can edit the structure of this page as well as the elements on it. 
To do that, just click on the Edit with Elementor button. Elementor is what we call a visual page builder. This means that you can click any element that you see on the page and edit it directly. For example, if you want to change the main headline, just click on it and start typing. If you take a look at the left sidebar, there's a whole customization panel there. You can adjust the structure and the styling of any content block. Another cool thing is that you can grab onto any element on the page and drag and drop it somewhere else. To add new elements, click on the small square icon in the top left corner. You'll see a list of all the content blocks available. Grab any of the blocks and drag it onto the page's canvas. Creating classic web pages is even easier to do in WordPress than working on your homepage. Just go into Pages, Add New. Every page needs a title, so start by adding one where it says Add a Title. For example, About Us or Contact. From there, you can further customize it, change the text, or replace images. And when you're done, click on the Publish button in the top right corner of the screen. You can follow the same process when working on your contact page or services page as well. Just pick different page blocks from the template library. If you want to add new page elements by hand, instead of using the templates, click on the plus icon. That's in the top left corner of the editor interface. Any block you select there will be added at the bottom of your page. And as you can see, you can really edit it freely, change the properties of the text, plus there are color settings in the right sidebar. As always, remember to click on publish when you're done. So the good news is that the blog page has already been created for you. This happened when you installed WordPress and your theme. You can see that page by going to Pages. Click on the View link to see your blog page in action. And to add new blog posts, simply go to Posts, Add New. Step six, set up a navigation menu. With a range of pages created, the next step in our quest to create a website is to set up your navigation or your website menu. The menu is what your visitors will use to go from page to page on your site. Go to Appearance, Menus, and from there, click on Create a New Menu. Start first by adding a title. The menu title doesn't really matter, but it does help to recognize your menu among other menus because, yes, you can have more than one. Select the pages to be added to your menu. You can also add other items to the menu, like posts or custom links. Click on the Add to Menu button to add the selected pages to your menu and drag and drop menu items to arrange the links in order of importance. Then select a menu display location. And lastly, save your menu. At this stage, you'll see your menu on the homepage in all of its glory. Step number seven is to add an online store or e-commerce. With WordPress being such a versatile website platform, it's no surprise that it can let you build a fully functional e-commerce online store. By fully functional, we mean that you can list any number of products, make them available for sale, and then also collect orders from customers and even handle all the tax and shipping related elements of the whole process. This is all done with a plugin called WooCommerce. WooCommerce is the most popular, most functional, and frankly, the best e-commerce solution for WordPress. Just go to your WordPress dashboard, then plugins and add new. Once there, type WooCommerce in the search field and install now. Once it's installed, you can choose Activate and then follow the prompts to get your store set up. Now with WooCommerce installed on your site and products added in your catalog, you'll notice that in the process, new pages have been created by WooCommerce automatically. All these pages work like any other page on your WordPress website. This means that you can edit them, add your own elements, or change things like colors, layouts, etc. But when you're doing this, just be careful not to erase the WooCommerce shortcodes that are already there. You'll also notice a new cart icon on the main menu of your site. At this stage, your e-commerce store is fully operational. So that's pretty much it. You are ready to launch your first site. The next two steps on your agenda should really be driving traffic to your site and monetizing your site. We have detailed posts outlining all that and more on our website. I'll be sure to leave that link down below. And if you completed our guide successfully, consider leaving your testimonial down below. We love hearing from you. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.